Hi everybody, it's Tammy here, and I wanted to just visit with you for a few minutes about blogging for students. Um, I think it's a great idea. I'll be honest with you, the blog that I use um, for my website for support for the teachers has forced me to be more um, intentional, more accurate, more precise, more compelling, um, more thoughtful in my writing. And so I think it's a great option to develop those writing skills we, we so desire for our students. So I think it's a great option and I wanted to explore that a little bit. Now we do have a tool available um, as part of the extended family for Google in blogger.com. So we would be able to use those student um, Google accounts so they could open up their blogger accounts to set up their blogs. Now. The first thing you might be thinking when you have the students out there on a web-based platform is security. We want to keep them safe. We don't want information about our kids to, to go out where it doesn't need to be or have, um, have the world have access to our students. So we want to be protective as possible. So I definitely would recommend some changing of um, some settings, some permissions before um, you let the kids start writing also, just FYI, on my website, on my blog, I just posted something about blogging for students, and there's some great resources on there about um, sensitive information that we don't want our kids putting out there, even if we're setting the settings the way that I'm going to show you, but just some things that teaches them some digital citizenship skills that we want them to have about not putting that sensitive information. So please take a look at my blog and take a look at that article that I posted just recently. All right, so I'm in Blogger and, and when you just log in to blogger.com, you'll log in with your Google account. You can do it just as well as the students can. And it will have you name your blog immediately and it will have you customize the URL or web address for your blog and you'll just have to find something that kind of goes with your blog. It's easy to share information about um, if you want to share that address with somebody in the class or, or with a teacher and it will only allow it if it's available. So that that's the initial setup. So when you have set up your blog name and the URL, then it brings you to this. Um, this is like your dashboard for bloggers this is where I am right now. Um, I will mention real quick quick on the left here, you have some easy um, ways to access. Um, you can access the theme where I am right here. I chose Mount Rainier because I, I love Mount Rainier. I visited that this summer and um, just like that. But you can change the different styles down here or your themes. You can change your layout over here on the left. Um, you can also customize it. So um, you just click on the customize button and it should take you to um, a place where you can change the background and the layout here as well. And so um, that's how I changed my um, picture from the default when it's set up. So I'm going to go back uh, right here to the blogger and I'm going to specifically talk about settings for this particular um, post. So um, we're in settings here and we're in basic and I would suggest this is what we do right off the bat when we have our kids set up their account. So have them go to settings and basic and they can even watch this video. And so we see the title. Um, I can change the title if I want to and then I need to put some kind of description about my blog. So I just set up an account just for this demonstration. I do use EduBlogs um, for my website. Um, you can also set up a, a Google site and have it just limited to um, have it access from people within the WPISD domain. Um, so, so here specifically on Blogger, you would change that description. And I want to address this, the privacy right here. So I'm going to edit the privacy and it says right now that my blog is added to their listings and it's also accessible by the search engines to force anybody to find my blog. And I don't need either one of those. So I'm gonna say no to both of those and then click save changes and then it should update that setting right there. And then I wanna go further on down the page to, um, and there's my blog address that I had set up. I wanna go down here to permissions. Now, this is also a place, like if you want to have somebody collaborating on a blog, you would add an author here, um, and you could have several, uh, several authors for this one blog. Um, so that's um, where you would do that. 
but I actually want to, um, let me move that over. I need to um, change the blog readers. Right now it's public and I don't want it public, at least to start out at the high school level, especially. But I would say at the middle school or junior high or at 13 and below, we want to make sure that they are private and, and not public. Um, so the the options you see here are private only blog authors so that would be if like maybe you had a group of students that were working on a blog together and they're collaborating and they only want it viewable by those authors then that's what they would choose but i would suggest private for only these readers and then you add readers here and you just invite readers to um to access your blog so you would add readers here and then my suggestion would to be uh, would be to go to choose from contacts and then you would um, put in um, a teacher's name and do a search and you'll find that teacher maybe you and you select them um, maybe you um, want to share it with the students in your class or with the select few students in your class so whoever you want to so this is my suggestion is set the blog readership to private for only these readers and then specifically go in to choose from your contacts because that will give you the WPISD domain people only. And so that would be my suggestion. Make sure you click save changes. Now, it's not gonna be automatic um, sharing with them. They will receive some kind of notification that you have shared with um, them your blog. And so they will accept that invitation and then you would be able to see the readers list down here. So that would be my suggestion. Remember, uh, we're going to start with um, the privacy setting here. We don't need it visible to search engines or on the blogger list. And then we want to change the readership to private and then select only the readers that we want, your teacher, and then maybe some um, students in the class um, only. And that way they have kind of a little practice with a global presence, even though it's not global, but it feels like it. And they can use this blog and they can develop their writing skills. You know, if you're looking for content, my suggestion would be let them write about something that they're interested in. They can find some research. You could have a genius hour, which is a badge, by the way. A genius hour is just time set aside. It doesn't have to be an hour but time set aside for students to be able to research and go find information about things that that's interesting to them. And they could write about that. They could write about them. They could write about their families. Just make sure they're really aware of any sensitive data. Don't want to put any sensitive, don't want to put birthdays and stay away from locations. Maybe just say, never use your last name. So um, just some common practices to make sure they understand that the web is a very public place, even though we've, we've made these settings here, um, make it a little bit more private. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, check my blog for that article about blogging for students and let me know how you like it. Thanks a lot.